Hello everyone. Welcome to this session. In this session, we'll look at Exadata monitoring in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Database Management Service. Earlier this year, we announced the general availability of Performance Hub in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Database Management Service. We are excited to announce that Performance Hub in Database Management Service now supports Exadata monitoring for Oracle databases on Exadata Cloud Service in OCI and on-premises Exadata deployments. This feature allows you to have a single view of all the databases in an Exadata deployment and perform the rapid diagnosis of its problems. For Exadata monitoring, Performance Hub has a new tab called Exadata tab. This is available for external databases that use Exadata infrastructure and Exadata cloud deployments. It provides a unified view of Oracle Exadata hard disk and flash performance statistics with deep insight into the health and performance of all components such as Oracle databases, Exadata storage cells, and automatic storage management. You can use the Exadata tab for enhanced performance diagnostics for databases deployed on Exadata systems. The Exadata tab is only available in the historical mode and supports only container databases. It does not support real-time views or pluggable databases. Let me walk you through a short demo of this feature and understand the use cases. All right, I am in the Managed Database Details page within the Database Management Service with respect to a database of my interest. This is an XSCS deployment, which is of version 19C. And of course, you would see this as a database type, which is rack enabled, and it is a CDB. As said before, you could only use Exadata tab in the context of a container database. Now, let me launch Performance Hub. So we now have the Performance Hub launched in the context of the database. You have Azure Analytics, SQL Monitoring, ADDM, Blocking Sessions, and Exadata. Let me move on to the Exadata tab quickly. And you would be able to see that this is only available in a historical mode. So if you are not seeing any data, you should be able to pull your time picker to the past hour, and then you would be seeing the data flowing. So this is the summary page, which basically talks about the performance summary. This section is the performance section of the Exadata tab, which shows the database performance, including a summary, latency statistics, flash IO statistics, and hard disk IO statistics. You can Understand the OS IO statistics by disk type, aggregated IOPS and IO in MBPS. And also it indicates for maximums or the max capacity based on Oracle published data sheet for Exadata. Let us now drill down and see to the details of the Exadata to understand these use cases in detail. So if I click on Exadata details, it takes me to the detailed section and I would be coming in the context of the performance section itself, which we discussed earlier, gives you the indication of the overall summary from a disk latency perspective, segregated by flash IO and hard disk IO. Now let's go to the health section. In this health section, you would be able to see the number of alerts that are currently open. You have three critical alerts, three warning alerts and if you want to see what they are you can go to the bottom section of the page scroll down there and understand more about the health of the system if you are on an exit data cloud service this would help you in raising a support request with uh, oracle and understand and resolve the problems in a much better fashion one question that customers typically have is how much flash throughput an oltp consumes this also relates to the question about how much disk io is because of flash cache now, this question can be answered and also even much details about the cell performance and the disk, wherein you could go to the cells and disk section. So this is the cells and disk section, which compares the operational statistics of the flash drives and hard disks in the system. It shows how IO is distributed between flash drives and hard disks, allowing you to see how much benefit the system is getting from flash cache how much disk IO is because of flash cache and how IO correlates to database single block reads. So you would be able to see percentage disk utilization, cell server, IO throughput, cell latency, so on and so forth. And if you go to the disk tab, you would be able to see a similar data 
This tab also does display statistics by cell, including top cells, cell outliers, OS IO throughput, cell server IO request, cell server IO throughput, percentage disk utilization, IO latency, and cell latency. You can select the default column group by which you want to display the data. Hover the mouse over a statistic to view details about it, like what you see here. You can actually do this and understand more about the application cell latency, IO latency, the queue time, etc. This feature allows you to monitor and track the throughput usage, utilization percentage from a disk or flash throughput perspective, and the latency and flash IO arm weights. This functionality gives us a good visual representation of the workload distribution and also based on which you could change your IORM strategy. Now let's look at another use case, which is who is consuming the IO. Consolidation of databases relies on a solid foundation of standardized systems and operational practices to meet the business goals of cost containment, simplified operations and improved security while delivering the required level of application performance. Standardized configurations must also provide sufficient flexibility to meet the needs of the business. Database performance is closely related to system capacity allocated to the database, but these aspects are ultimately separate in system management. You can often improve performance by allocating more resources to a database, while performance tuning of the database can often reduce resource usage. So performance and capacity are linked, but must be addressed separately. This is where you would be able to address the amount of resources and capacity assigned to each database and does not address database and application performance tuning. Now, this is where we need to understand more about the top consumers section. The top consumers section in the Exadata tab provides detailed data for analysis of capacity usage for Oracle databases and the systems that host Oracle databases. In this case, you would be able to see that there are multiple databases that are hosted onto the system and how are they doing from a request and a bytes perspective uh, for top databases and also from an IORMQ perspective. You could also see the top databases per cell. You can identify workload distribution across all the databases and databases consuming a significant amount of IO bandwidth. It also, as said before, displays the IORMQ time details of the top databases per cell and the details of the IORM queue. Another important feature is the automatic database diagnostics monitoring. ADDM gives you the following capabilities. It identifies the root cause of a problem and not symptoms. Get exit data specific recommendations for treating the root cause of problems. In this case, I don't have any recommendations. If I were to actually look at the ADDM findings, I don't have any kind of recommendations, but you would still be able to identify any non-problem areas of the Exadata system provided there was a recommendation from ADDM. Now, beyond that, you would also be able to address some of the common challenges by looking at the smart IO and IO recent sections to identify high IO load and categorize them by backup, ASM rebalance, user IO, and so on. You can also look at uh, which is the CPU bound cell. You can perform outlier analysis to identify the one that is different which is a different database or a different disk. The smart IO section for summaries of flash log and flash cache statistics by cell. So IO recents would give you the high load IO categorized by backup or um, maybe database control file read or maybe self tune checkpoint write. So this is basically giving you the IO recents and the configuration section allows you to understand issues like offline disks and various versions of the system. So that concludes this demo. Hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you for watching.